Welcome back. I'm speaking with Dimitri Laskaris about the Greek debt crisis and the most recent announcement made by the Eurogroup. And uh, please watch segment one if you haven't. Uh, segment two is going to be about what the IMF is laying out. So, uh, Dimitri, um, the IMF is looking like the good guys here um, in terms of the Greek debt crisis and the negotiations underway with the Euro group. Um, what is it that the IMF is actually laying out here? Well, the press has been focused upon the, the, the fact that the IMF has been calling for debt relief for months. You know, and that sounds like a, a rather humane thing to do to an economy that's been battered by austerity for uh, five or six years. Uh, but the part of the equation that the mainstream media is leaving out, of course, is that the IMF remains an enthusiastic cheerleader for the austerity program itself. Uh, and in fact, uh, even, you know, it, it, all of its calls for debt relief have been coupled with an insistence that Greece, uh, you know, continue, the Greek government continue to toe the line and continue to implement further austerity measures on the Greek, uh, on the Greek people. And this is precisely what the cities of government has been doing uh, uh, at the demand of the IMF and the other uh, creditors, the ECB uh, and, uh, and the EC. And what, for example, the city's government enacted just in the last month, it, it, it implemented further cuts to pensions uh, and uh, a, a revamping of the income tax system such that uh, the government reduced its expenditures by 3.6 billion euros. This past weekend, uh, it was forced the government to pass measures that, um, that uh, involved new taxes on alcohol, tobacco, fuel, internet usage, cars, hotel stays, and it also increased the basic value-added tax from 23% to 24%. And in addition, uh, and the IMF was perfectly happy to see this rather radical and brutal measure implemented, the government agreed uh, to legislate automatic spending cuts over and above those that I've just identified and that have already been implemented in the event that Greece uh, doesn't achieve its targets. Uh, the what remains of the left wing of Syriza was adamant that it was not going to accede to uh, automatic spending cuts being uh, drafted into law. But at the 11th hour, as Syriza has you know, demonstrated a, a wonderful talent to do, it capitulated yet again, and these automatic spending cuts were legislated. So you can imagine what will happen now. Greece is unlikely to meet its targets precisely because of the austerity, which will result in automatic spending cuts and further contraction in the economy, which will render all of Greece's debt even less sustainable than it already is. The IMF is an enthusiastic cheerleader of all of that, and that's not to be forgotten. So even to even if the IMF had achieved something meaningful, and I don't think it did yesterday in terms of uh, debt relief commitments from the European creditors, it still remains a major part of the problem because it has it it, it remains a devotee of this failed philosophy of austerity. Now, Dimitri, um, we, there's been weeks of protests in uh, Greece, um, not to mention years now, but, but recently there was a, a general strike. Um, and uh, it's very clear that the people uh, who are suffering the consequences of these measures in Greece uh, do, do not accept these terms. Um, and uh, in an interview that Michael Hudson did with us, you know, he said this is financial warfare. And uh, Greece is being asked to give up their ports, their pensions, their properties, uh, not to mention all the things that you just said. Um, how are the Greek people faring in uh, all of this? And is there any uh, uh, way in which the voices of the Greek people are going to be heard um, in these negotiation exercises that are going on? You know, I remember last summer, uh, Charmini, when we were covering the, uh, the crisis in Greece in July, uh, an activist there told me, as I recall, that uh, there had been more general strikes in Greece during the uh, austerity program than there had been in all the rest of Europe combined during that period. Uh, you know, Greece, of course, just constitutes a very small part of the Euro, the Eurozone. Uh, you know, initially there was a honeymoon period for the cities of government when it became clear that the cities of, that the cities of government was going to impose even harsher austerity on the Greek people than uh, its predecessors. The Greek people took to the streets again, uh, and they have been striking one day after another. They've been shutting down ports, uh, shutting down the transportation system. Uh, you know, there have been riot police in the streets again, the use of tear gas again. 
uh, I, I must say that uh, the resistance in the street does not appear to be having any effect whatsoever on government policy or the attitude of the Troika towards uh, the Greek people. And, uh, you know, if for there to be a meaningful change on the ground uh, in Greece, either Greece is going to have to exit the Eurozone, which is itself a path that is fraught with danger, or there's going to have to be a broad-based change in the politics of, uh, of the Eurozone, which means they're, they're going to have to be leftist, genuinely progressive governments uh, coming to power in major states within the Eurozone, uh, like France, like Italy, like Spain, states that have significantly more heft than Greece has because of the size of their economies. Only then are we going to see relief for the people of Greece. Otherwise, this, you know, this process of effectively keeping the Greek economy barely alive, uh, just enough to keep it servicing the debt with the assistance of further loans from the Troika, will go on and on. And the Greek economy will be hollowed out over time. And you know, even, even as things stand now, uh, there's a question about whether it can ever recover because there's been a massive brain drain. There's been huge exodus from the country of well-educated youth. Uh, the healthcare system is in disarray. Uh, infrastructure is collapsing. So, you know, I don't even know now whether the, com- the country can ever recover uh, and, 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 and re- re- rediscover that economy that it had before the austerity program began. I think we really need ultimately broad-based political change within the Eurozone. And uh, the worst hit are, of course, the pensioners and uh, people just struggling to keep their families uh, fed um, as a result. Can you tell us a little bit more about the impact this is having on pensioners and uh, the lowest, uh, um, I get the economic class in, in Greece? Well, you know, as I said, you know, the, the, the unemployment rate remains at 26 percent for the general population, for the youth. I, I believe it remains well in excess of 50 percent. You know, one thing that I, it has helped the Greek people to survive, uh, you know, many, of course, have become homeless. There's been a sharp increase in the suicide rate. So not not all of them have survived or at least have continued to maintain a decent life. Many do not uh, have not survived and ha- or do not uh, have a decent lifestyle. Uh, but what has allowed a surprisingly large percent of the population to avoid complete catastrophe is that, you know, is the social bonds and the family bonds within the society. And a lot of pensioners have been using their pensions to support their entire families. You know, adult children have been living with their parents and those pensions have been a lifeline. That's been the main reason in Greece, the pensions are basically the main form of social support. They don't have the other types of social support that you see in Uh, countries like France, for example, or like Canada. Uh, And so those pensions are critically important to keeping many people above uh, the line of poverty. And slowly they're being whittled away uh, so that even that form of support is is, uh, disappearing gradually. And uh, I think that if this process continues, you're going to see uh, further increases in unemployment, further increases in the suicide rate, in homelessness, uh, and at some point, the society may just uh, break down altogether and become a failed state. That's a real danger at this stage. There's no indication that the, uh, the, Euro, the Eurozone, that, the, that Greece's creditors are either cognizant of that danger or if they are cognizant of it, that they care. Uh, and so basically, we need new political leadership in Europe in order to prevent that disastrous outcome from ultimately, ultimately coming to pass. All right, Dimitri, there's so much more to talk about. Uh, the... Uh... Uh, magnitude of the problem as a result of the refugees that Greece are also uh, processing at this time. Um, But we will continue this discussion on The Real News. I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sharmini. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.